So in order to understand how gas exchange works in humans, you need to be able to understand the lungs. Now the lungs are highly adapted organs that allow mammals to exchange gases between the environment and their blood. So let's have a look at the structure of the thorax, which is the, the chest area here. So you've got the two lungs, the left and the right lung, and then leading down to the lungs, you've got the trachea, the windpipe, which carries the air from the environment down into the lungs. The trachea splits to go into the left and right lung, and when it splits, we call those tubes the bronchi, left and right bronchi. Those split even further into bronchioles, and eventually they end up in these tiny little air sacs called alveoli. You've got millions of these air sacs in each lung. So it's almost like an upside down tree with the trunk sticking up there in the air and then branching out into smaller and smaller branches, and then the alveoli are a bit like leaves. Surrounding so the lungs, you've got your ribs for protection protect the, the lungs, which are obviously quite sensitive and soft, and you need some kind of protection there. It's very, very important. And you've got the intercostal muscles, which we're going to talk more about later when we look at breathing and ventilation, as it's known. The diaphragm is also a muscle which separates the abdomen from the thorax, and therefore it's also very, very important in uh, ventilation. And you've also got surrounding the whole sort of cavity, chest cavity, the thorax, are these pleural membranes, which make a complete airtight seal, which is really important, and also provide a bit of uh, lubrication um, so that there's no friction when you're breathing in or out. So this table just summarizes the major structures you know about and the different functions in the lungs. So let's talk about breathing, or the proper word we should use for that is ventilation. Inhalation for in uh, breathing in, and exhalation for breathing out. Now, this is all to do with differences in air pressure. You don't have to suck in air, you don't have to and then force it out every time you breathe. It just happens, it just happens. The air moves in and the air moves out, but how does that work? Well, it works by changing the uh, air pressure inside your chest cavity, inside your thorax. If you lower the air pressure, more air will want to move in to equal that pressure. If you increase the air pressure, it will force air out automatically. How do we change the pressure? Well, you change the volume inside your thorax and that will either lower the pressure or increase the pressure. So you need to know a little bit about the uh, structures um, that are involved with this. And then it's actually very, very simple. So here you can see a uh, sideways view of a person with the back and the front and you've got the spine and you've got the ribs covering the front there and then you've got the diaphragm separating the middle. Now when you breathe in you just need to learn these steps. First of all the intercostal muscles those contract and when they contract they pull your rib cage up and out. So you can see that expanding up and out and the diaphragm here which was domed has now contracted and flattened. The chest volume has now got much bigger. I'll do that again. So I breathe in, thorax, ribs move up and out, diaphragm contracts and flattens. This volume is now much, much bigger. Much bigger, lower air pressure. Therefore, air gets drawn in to equalize the pressure. So you just have to remember those five steps. Breathing out, exhalation, as you can imagine, is the complete opposite. If I relax, those intercostal muscles relax, the ribs move down and in, the diaphragm relaxes and moves back up and squashes up the, uh, the lungs even smaller, and the volume inside is much smaller, and therefore the air pressure increases and that forces air out. So that is ventilation, inhalation, and exhalation or expiration.